So good evening. Uh, I'm Carrie Rattle, CEO and founder of a company called Behavioral Sense. I'm a money coach for professional women. And I'm pleased to say that I'm also a mentor for Women's Money. Women's Money is a nonprofit organization, and they run the greatest financial program in the US for women, number one program. So for those of you who were not here last week, this is class two. You can catch class one on YouTube, also on our Westchester public channel. So if you want to watch it on the TV, you can do that as well. And I'm so glad you guys are here, and I'm so glad the rest of the class returned. Yay! <laughs> so the class is about two hours. The first hour is going to be sort of working together, a lesson. And then the second hour can just be having conversation like we just started to do about things um, around women and money. We can, in the second hour, also talk about private things that you don't want to be heard on TV. Uh, so we're going to talk about goals. We're going to talk about what is a goal? Why does every financial company in the world ask you what your goals are? Why is it so difficult for people to create their goals? And we're going to talk about how you build your goal and figure out how to move toward it. Okay, so that's where we're going to start. We're going to start off with a fun exercise. We're going to pretend we're going on vacation. So, we're going on vacation together, ladies. What should we pack? What do we put in a suitcase to go on vacation? Clothes. What kind of clothes? Summer clothes. Oh. So we're going on a summer vacation. Yeah. Oh. Summer hot. <laughs> does, so does everybody else want to go somewhere hot? Mm -hmm. Yes? It's cold, I believe. It's cold here, yes. Yeah. So Aluma knows it. She says hot, too. How about Bob? You're in for a hot vacation? Usually I'm not. Usually not? Okay, so. Cold place. So you kind of like it here? Oh, it's okay. Yeah? You prefer cold? Prefer. Okay, how about you, Oka? I don't mind going on a hot vacation or cold. I don't, I'm okay. I'm very flex. <laughs> so this is good though because Here's the discussion, the beginnings of a goal discussion, right? So if you hadn't asked anybody, mm -hmm. you'd be taking us all to the Caribbean, right? Yeah. Somewhere nice and warm. warm. And Oka would be with you, mm -hmm. the Luminata would be with you, Bob would be saying, well, I'm not sure. <laughs> so, so, but this is good because it's part of the communication, right? It's like, what do you put in the suitcase? So, okay. We're, we'll go to the Caribbean with Althema this time around, okay? If that's fair for everybody. So great. We're gonna we're gonna put in summer clothes. What else do we need? Toiletries. Toiletries like suntan lotion for right. us, those of us who have fish belly white skin. Right. Um, okay, but so what do we want to do during the day? Swimming. So we need a swimsuit? Yeah, what else? I would like to see the island, not just stay sitting around. Right yeah. Okay, so we're, we're gonna do some touring, which probably means reasonable shoes. Right. Right, to walk around yeah. or something. Is everybody up for some touring? Yeah. Comfortable shoes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, okay, but do we pack a small suitcase or a large suitcase? Yeah, how long you gone. Exactly. We haven't talked about that, right? Mm -hmm. Is it a quick four days, down and back, a little bit of sun? Is it two weeks? What do we want to do? <laughs> what do you think? Two weeks. Two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> I'll be was there for two weeks in the Caribbean. Okay. Now, I'm not sure Bot's going to enjoy two weeks in the Caribbean, so she may have to leave early. Come back to the snow, right? And I, and I might have to leave with her. I think a week is enough for me. There you go. Yeah. So, 
Now tell me why a week would be enough. Um, I like the warm weather, but I'm, I'm, you know, like I'm not that crazy. Or I could tolerate it. Yeah. You know, and um, summer and spring, you know, are great. Yeah. Spring better, you know. Yes. But it, in the Caribbean, it's really warm. Very warm. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Last week. So, what we're talking about here are your your preferences. Your what you really enjoy. So what you enjoy is different from what you enjoy, which is different from you and you, right? And different from me. You know what I do on vacation? I climb up mountains with my husband, where the air is like 50% of what it is down here. And I, we actually think that's fun, right? Most people don't. So it's when, when you start building goals, and goals come from your dreams, it's important to know who you are and why the goal is important to you, not just what people say you should say for or what people say you should do for your money. And as you can tell, you're all different, right? And, and you're allowed to be different. It's perfectly fine to be different. So that's part of picking a goal. And it's, it's saying, it's talking about the time. It's talking about, well, if it's an activity, what, what do you want to do in that time? What kind of weather? What part of the world do you want to be in? So there are all these things that you have to decide that kind of come down to, okay, we're going on vacation, right? So that's a thought process, to think ahead and start planning those things. It's also a communication process so that if you're married, or you're taking your kids, do they want what you want? No, Illuminata says no way. Her 20-year-old, no way. <laughs> right? <laughs> so it's important to, again, when you're talking about finances, you're going to spend money doing this. You want to make sure you both enjoy it. Or whoever you take, you want to make sure your entire family enjoys it because it's important to spend money on what makes you happy. Fair deal? Mm -hmm. Okay. So that was just sort of a, a fun, simple example. Now we're going to talk a bit about why goals are so hard for people to set. So define a dream for me. What's a dream? you want to happen. Yes, perfect. Nicely done. And where does that dream reside? Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> In your mind, right? So we all have dreams up here. Or dreams for our kids here, right? But if we don't set goals, if we don't make a plan, they stay here. They never come out. They never get achieved. Or they stay here and they never get achieved. So the difference between a dream is that a dream is something you'd love to have or do someday. A goal is the plan to make it reality. So why do people have so much difficulty creating goals. What do you think? Have any of you guys created goals? I think that for goals it's hard to define sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you think once you've got that goal that once you've decided that it's in stone and then you can't change it. Yeah. So th this is good. This is a really good point. So you decide on a goal, and then you decide you can't change it. Why do you feel like you can't change it? Because if you're working towards it, I mean, you're going to have to undo everything you did to get there, mm -hmm. to start whatever else you think you want. Sometimes, yep. Or it could be that your goal changed because you went through those stepping stones to learn some more things 
that then made you realize your goal had to change. So sometimes, yeah, it's and it's um, it's very it's very North American to want to always move ahead, right? Achieve the goal, get things done, um, ambition or task oriented. It's it's the culture. So sometimes people think, oh my gosh, yes, I don't I don't want to commit to something because it could be wrong. Right? When I, when I work with uh, my clients sometimes, they'll say, well, okay, I, I have to plan on what I'm going to spend next one, month, but what if I'm wrong? And so I'll say to them, don't worry. It's just between you and the computer and me, and I'm not going to tell a soul. Right? So it, worry. Worry that it's wrong, that you may have wasted time. Why else is it hard to create a goal? Why is it kind of scary? You don't trust yourself. Yeah. So what what don't you trust yourself about? How are you going to achieve it? Mm -hmm. If you set that goal, is it feasible? So are you, uh, when you say you don't trust yourself, is it fear of failure? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, the finances themselves, where do they come from? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the resources or the information you need to get to the next step or, or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, fear of failure, fear of having to back up, waste, wasting time. Uh, what else? Bob, do you have any thoughts? Well, Actually, in our life, when we all have some certain goals that you're aiming for, mm -hmm. but it doesn't have to be so fixed. It's, uh, sometimes it uh, changes, and you have to be flexible to, mm -hmm. to alter something not possible to try to achieve it. It's uh, you end up a disaster one, one way or the other unless you have the capability to do so. And it's, it's all depend on how you are resourceful and mm -hmm. knowledge and uh, your ability to perform that. So it's, uh, we all have uh, goals in life, but Sometimes it doesn't work out. You might have to change the directions. Yeah. Sometimes totally different things you might end up to be doing. So yes. Yes. It's, uh, I don't know. We were not given an order to achieve it. So it's something that individual that we have. Uh, so that's really interesting. I like those words. We were not given an order to achieve the goal. It's something we choose. That that's really interesting. It's your vision. Your vision, yes. Your vision, uh, based on your knowledge, and uh, you you have to kind of summarize to what mm -hmm. could be possible to achieve mm -hmm. and. Uh, yeah. Well, they said it's uh, nothing is impossible, but there are things it's impossible. Yeah, there are things that are impossible. Um, but getting back to Illuminata's point, mm -hmm. having faith in yourself sometimes takes you much further than you thought you could go. That's true. It's true. I think so. Yes, yes. And part of it is, especially we as women sometimes don't have confidence in ourselves, even though women are incredibly capable. Incredibly capable. I have yet to find a woman who's not capable of doing anything she sets her mind to. It's just confidence sometimes. So for, for these reasons, right, that we've, we've talked about, fear of failure or having to redirect, um, having to, to backtrack, 
It's, it's like, oh my gosh, all this work, why bother? And for some people too, something else is planning ahead. It's a skill that not everyone learns to plan ahead. It's a skill that some people learn. They learn to plan three years ahead. And of course, these days, planning three years ahead is probably crazy because life changes so quickly. It's not probably ever going to happen, whatever you, you thought would. But learning to, to think forward is also a, a skill. And if you're not taught that, creating a goal using that is difficult. And research, research, which I think to some degree also gives you confidence a lot along the way. You can say to yourself, you know what? I don't know everything. I don't know how to get to that goal. But if I start, when I start researching a bit, I'm going to learn a bit more, and that will open a door, and then I'll realize I have to research something else. And you're at least smarter by the time you get toward that goal than you were by not doing anything. So all of these things get in the way sometimes of creating goals. But we're going to go through a couple of exercises to help you sort of understand how we can approach creating those goals a bit more. So there is a formula that we're going to use. It's called, I'll put a little dots in here, S M A R T. So those are periods after. So SMART is the acronym and it's in your binders. And it helps you define how you create a goal. So specific, what is the goal that you want to create? Measurable, so is it going to be in dollars? And for, for the, you know, because we're talking about money tonight, we'll make it in dollars, the first one. The second one, we're going to talk about dreams. Achievable, so can we really fit it into our lives, given what we earn, what we spend? Realistic, so how do we actually change our lives to make it achievable and do we can we do what we think we can do is it reasonable and then timely how much time is that goal going to take because some goals may be six months some goals might be six years they're all okay it just depends on what you want to achieve when and how big it is right the bigger the goal is the more likely it's going to take more time so, the first one we're going to talk about is paying down, so let's talk about savings, saving $5,000. So that's going to be our first goal. So the specific amount is we want to save, save money. And what do we want to use the five thousand dollars for? Bills. Bills. Pay bills. Okay. Save money to pay bills. We talked about five thousand dollars, so we're going to put five thousand in here. That's how much we want to save. So let's talk about this. We'll back into it a bit. How long do we think it might take to save $5,000 more than we're saving today? How many years? You want me to make one up? Maybe one year. Think one year? Oh, that's pretty good. Okay. I mean, I guess it depends on how you're saving, you know what I mean, I guess, yeah. what you, like how you intend to save that money. Yeah. Yeah. Like, are, is it going to be $600 a month, so 600 times 12 would be, you know, 
the five thousand. You know what I mean? Like it depends mm -hmm. on how. So let's do. Let's pick that. So let's say we're really ambitious. We're gonna and we're just gonna figure it out because you know what? We're creating a goal. The thing is, you can revise goals. So timely. We're gonna say one year. Olga's already got her calculator out. Yeah. <laughs> She's saying, I don't know about this. <laughs> so one year. Okay. One year. Twelve months, right? So we're going to divide 5,000 5, by twelve months. 416. 416? Yeah. $416 a month that we have to find that we didn't have yesterday. So, where are we going to find it? I think you'd have to get another job. Job. Is that realistic? For some people not, and for some people it might be. What about you guys? Would you would you want to get another job so you could save four hundred and sixteen a month? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we've got some people who would say yes. So one thing could be another job. Job number two. What else could we do? That's that's a chunk of change, right? What else could we do? Uh, you can spend less. On what? What do you think? Where could we find? So. So let's work at this. How many people here buy their lunch? I do. I, I walk in one. But I might have to admit that if you bring your lunch and your breakfast, the amount of money that you save yeah. will, like, I mean, like, you could save that because. So tell me, tell, tell me more. So how much do you think you save? I'll be honest, at one yeah. time where I worked at, because I worked like in the heart of White Plains, yeah. so lunch, you know, breakfast, you know, you go on the Dunkin' Donuts, you're getting this, you're getting that, Panera Bread. I was probably spending, I could say $25 a day between breakfast and lunch because it's so wow. expensive. Yeah. You know, and then it's like, you think, oh, I'm gonna run and go get iced coffee. I'm going to run and go get that. And what happens is now you have like your X. So you put like $20, you know, you don't realize that, you know, and then you're like, oh, I'm just refilling the app. The thing is, you can cut down those things. Mm -hmm. But when you're cutting them down, you have to put the money aside. Yeah. Yes. Because you could just say, oh, I didn't eat breakfast, I didn't eat lunch out. But what did you do with the money? You got yeah. to put it aside. Yeah. Like you know, like no, like it's it's like to save that. Like I'll just say, bro, like it's like at a time, like, you know, I used to not 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 eat lunch, but I used to take my own lunch mm -hmm. and do things so that I'd be able to go like get my hair done and my nails. <laughs> and my friend at work used to laugh. I'm like, oh well, if I bring my lunch today and tomorrow. Then that's my nails in my hair. And she and I yes. was like, you know, initially, you know, I never thought about it like that. And I was yes. like, well, yeah, you know, if it's like $20 for manicure, pedicure, pedicure can I take hair? Like, if you bring all your stuff for two days, then, you know, you can get that. You don't feel like it, you know, you feel like you're sacrificing. So, you, and I'll pay the $5 later, <laughs> you actually introduced mm -hmm. the next point, which answers your question. Why have goals? When you have a goal, and Althema just mentioned one, opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. So the opportunity cost is, if I don't spend money on lunch, I can get a manicure. So, that, so then you have a choice. So if you want to save, if bills are really bothering you, making you anxious, if you really want to save 5000 then that's your opportunity cost. So when you stop buying breakfast, to your point, Olga, mm -hmm. what you're going to say is, I'm not going to buy breakfast 
because I can put that $8 a day toward the 5,000. And here's the thinking ahead part, right? Some people will say, oh, it's only $8. But it's not. Got your calculator ready? It's $8 times five days a week, which is 40, times, let's say you're on vacation for two weeks, so just make it 50 weeks. Okay, we're up to 40? Yeah, 40 times 50. 2,000, right? 2,000. So, that little $8 a day for breakfast, ah, oh, it's only $8, is $2,000 a year. Do we want, so just by not buying breakfast, all of a sudden your goal is only 3,000 because you've already got $2,000 in the bank. Right? Just by not buying breakfast. Now, what's really important to understand too is that I don't believe in deprivation. Life is too short. So, if you're a really super busy mom, and the only peace and quiet you get all day is lining up at Dunkin' Donuts for a coffee, because you're in line, you can regroup your, your head, you know, you just drove to work in traffic, you ran out the door because one of your kids threw up, and so you were late. If it's the only peace and quiet you get all day, you should buy your coffee, right? And then find how to save somewhere else. But, if it's just a habit, and it's called autopilot, Right? What, what happens sometimes is that you make a decision when you're 20 years old. It's like, oh man, first job. I've got cash, I'm going to buy me some breakfast. So then it gets into a habit and you do it every day. Then, when you're 40 years old, it doesn't serve you well anymore. You need a new goal because when you're 40 years old, you have bills instead. So, what happens is that you have all these autopilot expenses that you don't always think about, that you can start thinking about. And, to your point, Althema, breakfast and lunch. And the opportunity cost was, I can now do my nails. I can get my mani-pedi. <laughs> Yay! By, by not buying breakfast and lunch, right? So, so it's the opportunity cost. And, it's your life, it's your life, it's your lives, right? So you can decide what you want to spend the money on. Your many penny or breakfast and lunch. Breakfast and lunch or paying down your bills so that your anxiety doesn't churn in your gut all day. Your choice. But what a goal does is it gives you that opportunity cost. There's Brilliant, the way you just kind of slid into that. People, and this is human nature, we all assume we have willpower. Um, I know when it comes to me and chocolate, I have no <laughs> willpower whatsoever. Anyone gets between me and chocolate, you'll just get run down, right? So, so the deal is, with my husband and I, that we do not have chocolate in the house. Because it's, it's emotion, like you, you mentioned, Every once in a while, you're having a bad day, so you'll spend some of your money or, or whatever, right? So, and that, that's, there is emotion in every decision, and that's what happens. It, it triggers. It triggers. Sometimes the emotion is you've had a bad day, and you feel really beaten, beaten up. Like, everybody got mad at you today at work, right? So you might just want to go to your favorite store because they treat you nicely. <laughs> they say, hi, good to see you, can we help you? And, and you don't feel so beaten up. Somebody actually loves you, even, even though they only love you because they want you to spend money. Sometimes it's, every, you know, everything goes wrong at work and it's, 
there's no control. So you want to go shopping because you take back control. So for every person, it's different because money means different things to all of us. Control, security, being loved, getting a deal, all that kind of stuff. That's why we're all different. So let's, let's get back to this for a second. Let's say one year is too aggressive, too scary. We can't do it. So, this is, this is just too high. Can't come up with that amount, right? So, we'll change this. What if we change it to four years? Now, I don't suggest that it takes four years to pay off all the bills, but sometimes it does. But we'll look we'll, for just purposes here for discussion. What I'm showing you is that it has to be able to work in your life. So if one year is too much, let's let's then you just sort of say, okay, I'm going to be easier on myself. Try to do it in four years. So if you do it in four years, Olga, you got your calculator ready there. Or divide that by four. That would be one whatever. One of uh, one Thank you. So $104 per month. Does that look better? More doable? So then you go back and you say, okay, is this is $104 a month more achievable? Is it realistic? Where do I find that $104? So now it's, let's say, you guys don't eat, eat, you don't buy lunch, right? You eat, you make your lunch? Yeah. yeah. I made my lunch for 30 years. You mm -hmm. save a ton of money. And you know what? It's healthier. So you eat mm -hmm. It's a lot healthier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I used to, I would just, literally, I, I worked a lot, so I would eat at my desk, too, which, which is not healthy, but I, I at least had healthy food. So $104. There are lots of ways to figure out how to do this. Who here has a cell phone? Cell phone, cell phone. You guys have cell phones? No? Yeah. So sometimes people, they use the same cell phone carrier for years, right? And if you don't shop around, sometimes you're actually overpaying. My husband and I did that. Yeah, and uh, we uh, revised, we, we bought new, new cell phones. And um, yeah, our bill went down $40 a month. Boom, just like that. Every once in a while, you just want to check your carriers, right? It's the same with um, cable, if you buy cable TV. Um, that sort of creeps up slowly but surely, and every once in a while, we've got a neighbor next door. This guy, he's, he's so cautious about this kind of stuff, right? So his cable carrier, it expires every two years. He shops around, he gets the best deal, he goes back to his carrier and says, I'm gonna go to this other one unless you reduce it. And they reduce it because they don't want to lose it because it's really competitive out there, right? So even things you, you pay for that you sort of take for granted, you might be able to find more money. So wherever you are in, in life, this, is, this can be as, as long a term as you want it to based on who you are and how much you're willing to set aside per month. So the whole idea is that is it achievable and realistic for you? Right? Because it's your goal, and this is how you measure it. Any questions about that? No? Okay. So now, that was like what I refer to as just a numerical goal. Numerical as in it was sort of just a dollar amount, right? So, can I, can I just say something like the example? Yes, 
was using, um, it, you used paying your bills. But I don't think it's a good idea to save for four years so you can pay your bills. Oh, no, I agree. <laughs> you know, you got to do it locally. Well, yes. Otherwise, yes. the interest will kill you. You'll never yes. pay them. Yeah. Yes. No, I, I agree. It's, it's better to save like for a savings account, for an emergency fund exactly. or something like that. If you're saving $100 a month, you actually want to pay your bill down as soon as you've saved that 100 um, for sure. No, I agree, because you're right, interest accumulates. Now what we're going to get into is one more goal to help you guys uh, get into the practice of setting goals. And Olga, I think this is where you volunteered for me. <laughs> so, so you mentioned that you're here because of all the things on the flyer. Yeah, all of them. So that's good, but, but tell me why you want to learn about all these things. Well, you know, I, I have my goals, and I feel like I'm not going to reach them, that I'll never reach them. So I said, how am I going to do this? Tell me what are your goals. Well, I want to, like, redo my house. Oh, nice. That's a lot of money. Nice. And, you know, and if I'm paying my bills down, then how can I save money to do that? Because that's a great expense. Yes. So that, that is your dream. That's my dream. Okay, so now we have to translate that into a goal. Okay? Which is measurable and a plan. So tell me what it means to redo your house. What do you mean what it means? So do you, do you want to totally blow it up? Or is it is it the kitchen that's really, really, really bugging you? Or like the kitchen, bathrooms, you know, done. And of course paint the whole the whole <coughs> house. <coughs> you want new floors. <laughs> and then paint. Yeah. So, which one really bothers you the most? The bathroom. Two, both of them or one? Is it your bathroom? Both. Both? both? Okay. So, what we're going to start to do here is prioritize. So, it's a big honking goal, right? It's a big goal. And if we all won the lottery, we could all do this and, you know, and keep all the contractors in, in New York busy. So this is number one. And what's number two? The kitchen. So what we're going to try to do is break this down so you can sort of figure out and how to plan ahead for it. So I know you have bills, right? And we can we can talk about for for every every person out there, there are different ways you want to handle your debt versus living life, right? And so we don't want to talk about your entire personal situation here because that's private. So what we're going to do is show you how to sort of think about one of these small goals and maybe try to set a little bit of money aside. But a little money aside is going to take you forever. Because those things cost a lot of money to you. Yep. So that's my whole anxiety. It's like, how long is it going to take me to save the money to do bathroom mm -hmm. to do the kitchen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I, like, I want it now. <laughs> I know. It's that instant gratification thing. Don't you hate it? Yes. <laughs> Drives you crazy. We, we all want it now. It's the North American thing. Now or never, right? So, I get it. I get it because my husband and I just did our bathroom too. Because um, We did our bathroom because it was leaking. And it started with... Uh, it was it was leaking the little the little tub in the bottom of the shower, mm -hmm. and it was under the tiles. The oh. the tub goes under, so if you have to rip off the tiles 
and you have to take the tub out, then you might as well put in new tiles, right? Mm -hmm. If you're gonna rip down all those tiles, you might as well put in new fixtures, right? So mm -hmm. it goes. <laughs> um, so what could give you great joy, though, is starting with the bathroom. Because all this stuff is driving you crazy, mm -hmm. but what I do see is a smart, healthy woman in front of me. <laughs> so you, you have some good things in life, right? Yeah. And so part of, part of this is also what makes you really happy at the end of the day. We all love to, I, well, I won't say we all, I, I watch HGTV. Do you guys ever watch HGTV? Oh, yes. The all house. the time. <laughs> so I stopped watching it because it just makes you think that everybody in the world is renovating they their house. Stuff, yeah. And they're not. They're not. But they, they make you think that, so then you think you should be renovating your house too. Um, so let's talk about the bathrooms. This is a big goal, but stages. Right, so you would do the bathrooms first and maybe the kitchens a little later. Mm -hmm. And then once they've dragged in stuff and destroyed all your floors, then you can put your new floors in, right? <laughs> and then you can pay. Right. So, so what we'll do is, sometimes you have a big goal and it's good to divide in parts. So what do you think your bathrooms will cost? Have you, have you investigated? I've investigated the smaller one, it's like $8,000. Okay. So the larger one, I have no idea. Small, $8,000. So what, what did you look at to get to $8,000? Because this is part of a goal, which is the research, right? It's like, okay, you want a new bathroom, but where do you start? So what did you look at for that $8,000? What do you mean, where did I look at? How, do you, how did you come to $8,000? I you... had contractors come in and okay. the amount of money that they wanted to charge me. Okay. And how many contractors did you have come in? Three. Okay, so that's good. You got bids, yeah. right? So steps in the process for this. A, bids. But before the bids, what did you ask them that you wanted to change? Everything. Everything. And I want the whole thing. Got it out. Got it out. So you want new fixtures, new floor, new, floor, new counters, new, new tile. Shower, new tiles, floor, uh, ceiling. Okay. Floors. Yeah. So the small bathroom, the, the large bathroom, how much larger is it? Than much larger. Much so larger. I have no idea how much. I didn't even ask them. I was afraid after I heard the eight thousand dollars. Okay. So doing the small bathroom, would that make you really happy? It would make me happy, yeah, because that's yeah. for, you know, company. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So in that, so really this should be B, you got the bids, because A, you decided what work you wanted done, right? So Carving it out into bits, specific is the small bathroom. Mm -hmm. Measurable, $8,000. So let's talk about achievable, realistic, and time. Mm -hmm. So, um, pick, pick some years. How long do you think it would take to save for that? The $8,000? Mm -hmm. Gotta be. At least four years, I would think. Okay, so let's pick four years. So eight thousand dollars in four years. So do you, can you divide forty-eight months into eight thousand dollars for me? That's I know it's two thousand a year. Yeah, it is two thousand a year. Um, but Which divide is the same two. calculation that we did before. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, is it in your mind? So, two thousand a year. We're going to just stick to the bathrooms now. We're going to narrow this down a bit. So, measurable is two thousand a year.
You think that's achievable? Yes, it is. As long as I have patience to wait four years, I'll be fine. <laughs> that's the problem. But you know what? I just learned something that I've been saying this for a while, and I could have been very close to it, but because I didn't do it. I didn't sit down and do this kind of yes, thing. Yes, exactly, because this is a really good point. You've probably been saying it for two or three years. Exactly, I could have been really close to it now. Yes, so for the two or three years, it was a dream, uh -huh. right? Not a goal. So, and what's amazing is that once you start to get momentum, you find other ways to, to find more money, right? So, I can't remember, do you buy your lunch or do you take your lunch? I, I, I take my lunch, I don't, okay. I don't eat. How's your cell phone? Pretty good plan. How's your cable TV? Not a good plan. And also my my I have a land phone that sometimes I wonder why do I have a land phone before I don't even use it. So how much is your land phone? My 20? land phone is like 130 something like that. A month? Yeah. Okay. Which is ridiculous. That's the money I should be putting aside so I can get my bathroom done. How badly do you want your bathroom? <laughs> right? Exactly. This is how goals work. That's the answer, right? I right? gotta get rid of my land phone. <laughs> yeah. Like if if you think about it. So it's 130 times 12 months. So that's 1,560 a year. So realistic land phone. 1,560 dollars per year. Wow. Right. Use it. Times four years is six thousand two hundred and forty dollars, right? And that's without even breaking a sweat. Mm -hmm. And that, that was. Don't even have to. That's not even trying, trying yet. We're not even trying. You just have to cancel your land phone. So we're almost. At the small bathroom, we might be able to start on the other bathroom. Exactly. Right? Um, so, how badly do you, do you want this bathroom? Do you? What else do you think you maybe spend money on? Um, do you get pedicures? I do. Do you get pedicures in the winter? Yes. What if you didn't get pedicures in the winter? That's true. Right. So let's say you got, how often do you get a pedicure? Well, it's every two weeks. Okay. And how much do you pay? $20? It comes out, well, I don't know. I guess it's 20 bucks the pedicure, but I think the manicure is 10 Okay. So let's say December, January, February, March. $40, right, because it's every two weeks. 40 40 40 40 so that's $160 a year. Per year. Times four. 640. So. Without, you know, a lot of effort. Yeah. And. You know, manicures and pedicures, we all like to feel pretty. Um, if, if you want to look professional, yeah, manicures are great. And some women have nails that aren't so pretty because, you know, they have diseases and things, right? And so it's important to feel pretty. But how badly do you want your bathroom? Yeah, right? Yeah, I guess I can do it sooner than later. Yeah, look at, look at that. That landline man has got to go. <laughs> yeah, that landline must go. Yeah, yeah. And now that you have a goal, what's important is that the 130 doesn't go to something else. It goes into a savings account. Absolutely. Right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing. Once you have, instead of a dream, you have the goal. You can, um, you can you can make a goal and then uh, some emergencies come and then it's true it is not the aim. 
<laughs> this small bathroom is gone. Maybe it's time to make it. Where do you get the money? I know, I know. Yeah, things happen, but you know, if you don't do anything, then you'll never get, I want to get the bathroom, you yeah. know. Right, right. Because three years ago, she I was talking it. about exactly. the bathroom. So three years ago, you would you would have had somewhere around like four thousand dollars, right? So you would have had ten by now, mm -hmm. and you you would not only be getting your small bathroom, you have two thousand dollars to fix the leak, um, or the or an emergency, and or you'd be working on your big bathroom by now. Exactly. Yeah, and you you're right, Illuminata. Like sometimes stuff happens, right? But the good news is that if you didn't have money sitting there, you'd be paying on your credit card and paying 17% interest on that emergency. So the good news is that you're not putting it on your credit card, you're using cash. Um, and when, when you've got emergencies like health, you have to just sort of sit back and say, wow, okay, but somebody's now healthy and they weren't. And, you know, our loved ones are more important than bathrooms. But I think this kind of shows a little bit of the, the magic just by taking it from a dream to a goal, how you can focus. And it's amazing. Once you start thinking about it, you'll start looking at other things you spend money on that maybe you don't have to. That's true. Yeah. Little treats here and there, gifts. Um, and I'm not saying don't give your friends gifts anymore, that's, but you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's your choice, it's your money, it's your life, and you can choose. So thank you, well, for, thank you. for helping with, with that, yeah. um, it was, that was a really good example. That's great. So are there any, any questions about any of this. Are you guys good with it? I'm sort of, Bach is sort of saying, I don't know about this stuff. <laughs> what do you think? Did, did you, was this at all helpful for you? Because I know you were talking about goals, so you have your own goals, right? It's fine. I, so, it goes back to this, and the last thing I want to talk about this evening is smart herb. So smart, but then herb is, let's say you're, you're trying for this. You're trying to save $100 a month, but it's not working. So then the err is evaluate. Am I saving? Am I able to save what I thought I could save every month? And if it's just not realistic, because you've decided you actually need to eat, then you readjust. And if you readjust, you may say, okay, I can only save $50 a month, not 100, which means your time changes. And the point here is that sometimes people are so afraid of being wrong with their goals. When you set money aside, you may change. You may decide, you know what? I've saved $10,000. I no longer want to do my kitchen or do my bathroom. I want to go on a cruise instead. That's OK. And you know what? Now you've got the cash to do it, right? Sure. Cruise of a lifetime, big anniversary or big birthday. Um, so it's okay to change the goal because you set the money aside and it can be used on everything you want it to be used on. Any questions about this? Yeah, that, that was a real eye opener for me. Oh, good. On that land phone. Good. I'm going to call you. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Check out your cell phone, too, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think this is going.
going to end the formal part of our uh, video. And thank you, Greater Austin TV, and thank you, Austin Library, for allowing us to to meet here every other Thursday. So thank you. And next week we're going to start talking about tracking your cash. That's so that's lesson number three. Thank you very much, and have a good evening. <laughs>